Okay, I am not sure if you guys can see me, so if you can, let me know. For some reason, uh, I had problems streaming uh, down in the garden, which I really was looking forward to today, but you know what? Technology, you never know what's gonna happen. So let me know if you can see me or hear me. Okay, there I am. For some reason, all of a sudden, my phone is locked in the wrong orientation, and I'm trying to remember how to. <laughs> okay, guys, good. I'm glad you can see me and hear me. How in the heck do I unlock the orientation so I show up vertically instead of horizontally? I can't see the chat right now. Um, so if you have any great ideas, let me know. <laughs> I'm actually going to head over to YouTube <clears throat> and see if... Um, I can see myself on there and that might help me see the chat. <clears throat> so stand by for just a moment, okay? Sorry about this. I was really looking forward to having everything go like clockwork today. Okay, now let me head over to my YouTube channel and see if I can find out where the new stream is so I can actually see the chat. So, <laughs> sorry about this, guys. Okay, I think I'm seeing myself here now. And let me see if I can pull up the chat and then we'll be all set. Scroll to the bottom up to up and you can unlock your screen. Okay, thank you, guys. I'm trying to do that, but for some reason, to do that on my screen. So I, what I'm going to do here is look at the, um, the computer to see the chat, which I know is going to be a little bit awkward, and then um, I'll talk to you guys hopefully here on my phone. Okay, so here we go, guys. Anyway, I am really glad that you guys are, are here today. I am really glad to be back. We had a wonderful time. Um, a lot of you know that we were gone for a couple of weeks. We went to um, Hawaii and had a wonderful trip. It was super relaxing. It was nice to have a break. But of course, if you guys have ever been away from home, it's always nice to get back and really, really wonderful to see all of the growth in the garden um, that happened while we were gone. And you can just see it so much more. Oh my gosh, now I'm seeing myself on the screen and it's totally turned the wrong way. Oh, geez, I'm sideways. Okay. <laughs> This is gonna be the funniest live stream ever, especially on the replay. Okay, so we'll do it like this. I think I'm just gonna hold the phone, um, which is gonna look really, really funny on the replay. Let me see if I can figure out how to mess. <laughs> okay, you never know what's gonna happen on a live video. So um, anyway, guys, thanks a lot for joining me. We're glad to be back. Great to see all the growth in the garden. <laughs> Charles, that's funny. Hair in perfect place. Okay, you can't beat that. Um, anyway, um, today we're going to talk about four things to do in your garden in September. So bear with me here with all the false starts and everything. Brandon, thank you so much for the $2 super chat. Um, that's really nice of you considering all the mess ups here on the live stream, but it's great to have you back here again on the live and I really appreciate the super chat. So um, today we're going to talk about four things to do in your garden in September. So I know a lot of you are heading into the um, the cold weather here. Um, we still have lots of warm weather left in SoCal, but I know a lot of you, it's getting cooler where you live, and you might be wondering, what the heck do I do? Do I, do I still garden in September? What the heck do I do in my garden in September? Absolutely, yes. Um, if you're in warm weather, there's plenty to do. If you're coming into cold weather, there's also still plenty to do in your garden. So before we start jumping on that, let me just um, see who all is here with us today. There were a ton of people on before the live stream started. I want to say a special welcome to Pat and her second graders all the way watching all the way from Philly in Pennsylvania um, she has some second graders that are growing a garden at their school so it's always exciting they're already harvesting a lot of things they planted a garden last spring and are already harvesting from it or are harvesting from it um, lots of wonderful things and planting a cool weather garden so thank you so much for joining us um, Kim P thanks for finding me over here on the new live stream on the new live stream I don't know why we're having so many issues lately so we'll try and do some uh, private live streams so we can get all the kinks worked out before we live stream Stream next week so thank you so much for your patience Stephen from Canada Courtney from Seattle uh, RJ from Florida great 
Um, let's see here. Who else? Now you're upright, Kim, but in portrait, I know. I know it's going to, I know I'm in portrait. I know I'm not in the usual way that we're live streaming, but this is the best we can do for today with some te technical difficulties. So thanks for bearing with me. Um, Petzella, I know you guys were all having a great time over on the other live stream. Hopefully you saw my comment over there to join me over here. So um, sorry for all the problems today. Okay, so great to have you all back again. And let's jump right in and talk about the first thing that you can do in your garden in September. And hopefully a lot of you are already doing this. And that is you're already planting your cool weather vegetables. Very important that you get that going. Just because the summer is over, you do not need to stop gardening. A lot of people think, wow, I just plant in the spring. And absolutely, you, you wanna keep on planting all summer all into the fall, and if you're getting cold weather, you can even grow some things indoors. So if you've got um, your frost date just around the corner, there are a couple of things that you can get planted. With a little bit of luck, you can still get some harvest. And a couple of those we planted on the fall gardening video, I don't know, that was before we left on vacation. I wanna say maybe a month ago, maybe three weeks ago. And I've got some actually coming up right here. So let me show you guys. Um, we planted some radishes right here. <clears throat> And these are all from my fall garden seed collection and the radishes and then we have some paris cause lettuce right here also and then right behind it we have some little marble peas right over there um, in the black five gallon um, smart pots so these are actually doing remarkably well i didn't think they would grow so well because the weather was so hot while we were gone it was definitely near triple digits and they have just grown like crazy. I'm super surprised. The Paris Cause Romaine Lettuce is a more heat tolerant variety and it's doing very, very well. So um, that was a really nice surprise when I got back and saw those all um, growing so nicely. So if you have a month or so left before you're gonna get frost, definitely get some of those quick growing vegetables planted like radishes, like some lettuce, um, even some uh, peas are great things to plant because they are frost tolerant. And once they get established, they're gonna be um, surviving your first winter frost, those light frosts that you get at the beginning of the season. And especially the root vegetables like the radishes um, will do very well even when you get uh, much colder weather because they're underground. The vegetable is growing as a root underground and so it's protected from the cold weather by the insulation of the soil. So definitely get those growing. If you don't have any space in your garden beds, uh, maybe you're in a warm weather climate, grow some in containers like I am right here. Um, these are growing in the Cali Kim containers. This is the purple container, which has, actually has a good amount of growing space. It has about, I wanna say about three feet or so of growing space, I think that's it. Um, something like that. And then the five gallon Cali Kim Smart Pots um, hold five gallons of soil and they're a perfect little container to pop things in. So find some containers around your house, pop in some of those cool weather veggies and don't stop growing. Now, if you're in a warm winter climate like I am in California, Southern California, or in like Texas or Florida, or something like that, you can definitely get some of the um, cool weather vegetables growing that have a longer um, maturity date, like the, like the cauliflower or longer maturity time, like the cauliflower, broccoli, some of the root vegetables are great, like the beets, um, <clears throat> the radishes, uh, root vegetables are wonderful to grow during the winter time. And a lot of the cool weather vegetables grow beautifully in the winter in a warm winter climate. So definitely get those going. Um, I actually had a tray to show you uh, down where I was live streaming when I originally planned to live stream in the garden and had to rush up here and left those down there. But I did start a lot of cool weather vegetables and have been growing them inside. Um, because it's pretty hot to, to grow them outside right now, but they're ready to get planted. So I'll probably be um, just giving that a go, planting those in the next couple of weeks, and we'll do a video on that so that you know exactly how to get your cool weather veggies planted. So first thing to do in your garden in September is plant new seeds. And I really tried to make um, planting easy for everyone and very convenient by putting together my seed collection. So we do have one for cool weather gardening. It's called the Fall Garden Seed Collection. So that's a really great one for you to pick up if you're just getting started or you need some cool weather seeds. The Fall Garden Seed Collection is a good one to start with 
or the lettuce collection too. Lettuce is a cool weather vegetable and the lettuce collection has five varieties that would be uh, great to plant um, during the cool winter months. So Anissa just planted my 10 vegetables yesterday. That's great. It's such a good feeling to get new seeds planted, isn't it? Um, especially when some of your, um, maybe your summertime vegetables are starting to kind of reach the end of their life and maybe looking a little bit shabby. It's, it's nice to have a fresh new start and get those needs, new seeds planted. So good job, Anissa. I'm really Really glad that you're getting started. Um, so let's see who else is planting. Let me know what you're planting. Maria, hi from Rosamond, California. Uh, Nisha, how are you doing? I know she's gardening up in Northern California and she has a question. Uh, my Space Master Cukes are flowers all dried up. Should I sow more seeds? Yes, absolutely, Nisha. And that does happen when the weather gets hot and we have had a lot of hot weather here in California over the past month or so. Even when you keep your plants shaded sometimes, um, if you've got temperatures um, you know, in the 90s or 100s, sometimes your flowers will dry up, which really, of course, slows down your production. But cucumbers are one of those plants, as well as beans, that, you, that you know, grow fast. And if you're in a warm weather climate where you're not getting frost for a while, you can definitely get a new wave of vegetables going. So make sure you plant those um, uh, things like, or, plants like cucumbers in full sun because the weather will probably be cooling down in the next month to, month to six weeks and you're going to want um, to have to take advantage of the full sun. Okay, let's see what other comments are, the are in the chat. The chat's really flying by, um, so I'm going to answer as many questions as I can, but sorry if I don't get to yours. It's nothing personal. It just means that the chat is flying right by. And I saw a question, someone asking, can we plant seeds directly in the ground right now? So it really depends on where you live, what the weather's like. Um, as you can tell, I planted cool weather vegetables right here. In, in right, I direct seeded them right in these containers. And although it's still hot, they're still doing well. So it's always good to experiment maybe with a couple different ways of planting. Um, like I mentioned, I have some going out here. I also have some going in the house under grow lights. So give yourself some backups in case your plants that you, your seeds you plant outside don't make it if it gets too hot or too cold. Always plant backups, always have a couple things going at once just to make sure that you always have something to harvest because we never want to be without those fresh veggies, even if it's just a radish or two or a little bit of lettuce, right? I know um, I always want to have something to harvest from the garden. Okay, question here from Angela's Garden Sense. What's the best treatment for powdery mildew? Angela, I just happened to uh, post a video on that um, a little while back. So go back to my, or go over to my YouTube channel and search powdery mildew. There should be a couple videos that pop up. A really easy treatment that I like is something that anyone can do. You, most likely everyone has milk of some kind <clears throat> in your refrigerator. So you can make a very easy milk spray. Um, so you can go and check the video on that. And it does help really keep the powdery mildew under control. But keep in mind, there's no hard and fast cure that I found for powdery mildew. It does um, affect my plants at some point, even when I do apply the milk spray. But the milk spray to me just really helps keep it under control. So when I got back from vacation, hopefully you guys were able to catch the little garden tour I did when we got back. I did have a lot of powdery mildew on my plants and I trimmed them up. For the most part, I was able to get most of them trimmed up. And um, that's really the biggest thing is keep your plants pruned when they have powdery mildew to help keep it from spreading. Okay, so um, Karen says, Hi, Kim, I live in Georgia. Is it okay to plant cabbage seeds or plants? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, now is a great time to get those um, cabbages going, cabbage seeds going, or cabbage plants, if you can find them in the garden centers. However, seeds are a much cheaper way to start. So um, if you you know can plant from seeds, uh, go, definitely go ahead and do that. You always do wanna check your first frost date. I'm not sure what it is in Georgia, you can find that on Farmer's Almanac and see if you have enough time to grow cabbages and get them established before it frosts. If you have them growing and established before it frosts, most likely they will survive the first few light frosts and be fine um, during the first month or so of winter time. So definitely um, do that. Okay, let's talk about the second thing that you can do in your garden um, to um, 
in September here, and I'm sorry, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, make sure that you do go back and watch the fall garden video um, on planting that we did uh, maybe a month or so ago. You can head to my channel and search fall gardening, or Christy can pop it in the chat here. It'll also be in the, um, once this uh, live stream uploads, it will be in the video description. But I talked all about fall gardening, how to plant your seeds, um, what vegetables, eight vegetables that are good to plant for cool weather um, gardening. So you can go back and check that out for more detailed information. Okay, so the second thing you wanna do now is to start cleaning out your garden beds. Um, you know, maybe some of your warm weather vegetables are starting to die off reach the end of their season. I mean, all plants do have a season for the most part. Um, most plants just reach a point where they're done with their production. So you can start cleaning out your garden beds. Um, some of the plants that are looking, you know, diseased or maybe just dying out. And um, you can go and check out my video on how to decide when to pull a plant out. Because sometimes it is hard to pull out a plant I know for me, I get attached to some of my plants. I know it sounds kind of crazy. I don't know if you, any of you go through that, but you know, a plant that I really like, it's given me really good vegetables during the growing season. Um, I pulled out my Scarlet Runner beans for that video and it actually was really hard because I really loved that garden bed, how it looked. I loved the flowers. I loved the beans that we harvested from it. It was really tough to, to pull all those out, but we did bite the bullet, pull them out, and then we planted something new. So if you still have time in your growing season, you can clean out your garden beds and with all the old stuff, because sometimes it's easier just to start over with new plants. Plant some brand new seeds. Um, and again, the seeds that you plant will really depend on where you live and when your frost date hits. Um, plant some new plants, or if you're kind of ready to be done and take a break, um, then you can clean those garden beds out. And then I'll talk about in a minute what to do with those empty garden beds. But you can compost your plants that are healthy. And if, you, if your plants have disease or a lot of bugs, I would recommend just throwing them in your green trash can rather than putting them in the compost pile because you don't want to be spreading you know, disease like a powdery mildew or blight um, through your compost pile to the rest of your garden. So do make sure you get rid of your diseased plants and do not compost them. So that's always a good thing to do. It's kind of a good feeling to start over fresh. Um, and although it's sad, it, it does give um, the garden beds a fresh new look and um, just gives you a fresh new feeling of starting over or kind of finishing off for the season. But we're not done. Don't think that you're done growing because you can always grow something inside if it's getting too cold where you live. So first off, you wanna make sure that you're still planting something, get a quick crop in or continue planting if you're in a warm weather, um, warm winter climate. And the second thing you can do in September is to start cleaning out some of your garden beds. So we'll talk about the third thing in just a moment, but let me check and see what's going on in the chat. Here are a lot of um, questions flying by. So let's see, Charles, and Charles is back after being gone from the live stream for a little while. So welcome back. And he mentioned in uh, prior, the prior live, prior to the live stream in the chat that he just turned 18, so happy birthday. So glad that you're here, so glad you're still gardening. And his question is, should I start growing some herb seeds here in Yuma, Arizona? Okay, Charles, absolutely you can. Um, kind of the general principle that I try and tell people is, rather than saying, should I start this particular seed here, is always check um, what the weather's gonna be like. Um, and then check what type of vegetable or herb you're gonna be growing. Check the maturity date, see if you have have enough time to get your um, crop or your vegetable or herb to mature in the type of weather that you're working with. So cool weather vegetables grow best in temperatures under 75 degrees. Many are frost tolerant and warm weather vegetables and herbs grow best in weather between 60 and 85 degrees. So check the type of herb or vegetable you want to plant, check the weather um, coming up in the next few months in your area, and then just plant accordingly. And that's really the simplest way to garden is to work with the weather um, and the seeds you're planting and the vegetables you're planting, not against it. So Arizona, I'm, I'm sure has a pretty warm winter like we do here. So you can plant the warm weather herbs like um, basil, um, lots of different types of basil you can plant. Um, let me see what else, a mint and 
Oh, uh, well, I'm trying to think what else is in my herb seed collection. The mint is a great one. Oregano is a great one. Thyme is a good warm weather herb. You also might want to start some cooler weather herbs inside because they do take a little bit of time to sprout. Like the cilantro and parsley, you can start seeds indoors, maybe a month or so before the cool weather hits, and then you'll have transplants to put into your garden once the weather cools off. Okay, let's see what other questions we have here. You're welcome, very welcome, Charles. I'm glad you're enjoying the tips. Um, let's see, Piano Master is on here today. Thank you so much for joining us. And Piano Master says, was hoping to get some raised beds um, soon because of all the fall seedlings, but they're too expensive. So we found eight free bookshelves. Wow, great idea. On the side of the road, waterproof them. We've got six raised beds for $14. Wow, you cannot beat that. That's amazing. That's a great, great price and a great use of resources. I'm really glad you were able to do that. Um, we also posted a video on how to build a really, really simple raised bed and it costs under $20. I want to say between $10 and $15. Super easy. You don't have to be a major construction person because we are definitely not that. Um, you just need a little bit of wood from the hardware store. Maybe you already have wood around your house. You can repurpose, but very, very simple to get a, a raised bed um, built for 10 to $15. So definitely don't think that it's too expensive to garden. You can even make your own soil if you want to. There's lots of good recipes out there online and get yourself something started. It's very inexpensive, especially when you start from seed. Okay, let's see here what other ideas um, and comments are flying by here. Um, I want to make my grandma an herb crate garden. That would be wonderful, Charles. I'm sure she would absolutely love that. Uh, Brandon planted strawberry seeds. Was that a good idea in California? Sure, absolutely. Go for it, Brandon. I actually haven't had great luck growing strawberries from seeds. That's one thing I'd really like to work on. Probably start on that maybe sometime after the first of the year. So if you have any tips for me on how to do that as you're planting your strawberries from seed, Brandon, then I would love to hear about it too. Um, always a first time for everything and it's always fun to learn and experiment and grow. I never stop learning and I hopefully um, you guys never do too. Okay, my backyard 123 said I reused an old desk. Wonderful. I love to hear how people are repurposing, reusing, and gardening however they can. That's great. So glad to hear that. Um, what grows well in humidity? I live in South Florida. Um, you can grow just about anything in humidity. Um, it really just depends on the heat, and then it's just taking care of some of the humidity issues that you might have as far as uh, diseases. So that's probably going to be your biggest challenge is dealing with diseases that happen in high humidity, such as powdery mildew. So, um, you know, hopefully, I think, hopefully in Florida, I know our moderator, Everything Sunflowers and More, uh, lives in Florida, and she might be able to give you some specific uh, vegetables that, that she's had good success with, or if anyone else lives in Florida. Um, I know you can also watch um, Gary at the Rusted Garden. He lives in Maryland in a high humidity area and grows just about every kind of vegetable that I do here in my garden in California. So it really is probably just more of an issue of dealing with diseases. So definitely um, grow cooler weather vegetables over the winter in Florida and warmer weather vegetables probably in the spring and early summer. The midsummer might be a little bit too hot. So um, you might have to use some shade cloth for that. Okay. We go from hot to hotter. Only one single mom in Florida. Yes, definitely. That's, that can be a challenge. Okay, Pat Sella is sharing something about growing strawberries from seed and use the same method as other seedlings, peat pellets and grow lights. Pot up when they get bigger. They were much easier than I thought. Okay, great, Pat Sella. I will definitely try that again. I did try some uh, maybe a couple months ago and they were just super slow growing and really did not take off. So maybe it's the variety. Maybe I'll try a different variety next time and hopefully um, that will help. Okay. Oh, I hear, hear a comment here from RSS Diamond. This is my first year. I'm in Indiana and got a late start. Our first frost is usually mid to late October. Do you think I have time for lettuce and radishes? I would absolutely give it a go, RSS. First of all, I'm super glad that you're here. I'm super glad that you're starting your garden. It's always fun to get started and it's never too late. I would get some started. Radishes will go from seed to harvest in about three to four weeks. You probably definitely have time with that. 
and lettuce about maybe around six weeks, but they're frost tolerant. So even if your frost is mid-October, which is in about a month or so, you should be able to still get some going. And with any luck, you'll get a harvest before it frosts. Okay, let's head back and we'll talk about my third tip I had for today. Um, my third tip was as you're pulling out those uh, old plants, and even if you have some plants that are still going, which I know a lot of us do, and here in California, our gardens are still in full swing in southern climates. Our gardens are, we're just, you know, really coming into our best harvest time. So now is a great time, whether you're cleaning out or whether you have plants going, to really help rejuvenate the soil. Um, give your plants that are going a boost by um, fertilizing them. Um, put some worm castings on it. You guys know I love to use the Vermistera worm castings and worm tea. Great time to do that. Great time to put some compost around the base of your plants to really help give them a boost, get the most production out of them that you possibly can. And if you're cleaning out those garden beds, make sure that you don't leave them completely bare soil during the winter. There's definitely some things you want to do to your empty garden beds. First of all, collect all the all the fall leaves that you possibly can from around your neighborhood, from your neighbors, from your own yard, from parks nearby. Don't let any of those beautiful fall leaves go to waste. They are like garden gold. You can completely cover your garden beds with them over the winter time. And during the snow and the rain of the winter, they're gonna break down and really add some great organic nutrients to the soil. So don't leave those garden beds um, bare soil. Definitely mulch them with leaves as much as you can. And if you've got a compost pile going, it's a great time also to add some compost to your garden bed. So you can pull out your old plants, add a layer of compost on top, and then as the leaves fall down, definitely add some, some leaves on top of your garden beds. It's a great idea if you have a lawnmower or a leaf shredder to either run over your leaves with a lawnmower to break them down even smaller. That way they'll break down quicker in your garden beds or just shred them up somehow and just cover your garden beds with a couple layers of shredded leaves. Absolutely, Garden Gold will get your garden started that much sooner in the spring. It'll make your soil nice and fertile over the winter months. And huge, huge benefit, it brings in the worms like crazy. And we all know um, that worms are like Garden Gold. So they'll poop in your garden beds over the winter time, leave their beautiful worm castings, and your garden beds are gonna be ready to go in the spring. So if you don't have access to compost or um, shredded leaves, pick up some of the Vermistera worm castings. They're a great soil amendment to add in to any garden bed, even along with the compost or the leaves. So you can grab that at vermistera.com. Check the link in the video description here for the um, discount code. It's Callie Kim. You can grab them at a 10% discount over at vermistera.com. So definitely as you're cleaning out your garden beds, make sure that you are enriching your soil and improving your soil because the key to really growing productive veggies is healthy soil. So if you have healthy soil and good soil, you're going to have a great crop um, and much healthier plants. So things to do in September. You want to make sure you keep planting. You want to start cleaning out your garden beds and you want to make sure that you are improving your soil. Three, three practical things that you can do here in the next few weeks of September to keep your gardening going. I know some people get a little Oh my gosh, during the winter time, they get this itch to, you know, to keep gardening. So those are three practical things that you can do to keep gardening as the cool weather is setting in. So hopefully those are helpful tips for you guys today. And let's head back in the chat for the last few minutes and answer as many questions as we can. I would love to hear any September tips that you have for your garden as well. Okay, let's see here. Um, oh, Piano Master, this is a great comment. Heard that Home Depot gives away old two by fours um, in the construction center. So that's a great way to get some raised beds going for, for inexpensive. You could stack a couple of those up and have yourself a little raised bed. Okay, let's see here. Chisholm from New Jersey. Um, the next frost date is mid-November. Can I get a harvest before then? I planted my tomatoes, peppers, onions, and okra end of July. Okay, you should be able to. It really depends on um, the sunlight that they're getting. The weather is going to be starting to cool off um, in New Jersey, I'm sure, and you may be having fewer hours of sunlight a day. So it really depends on the varieties that you planted, but hopefully you'll be able to get something um, harvested before November. Um, the, the, the other thing you can do is if you're expecting a frost and you haven't quite gotten all of your 
crops harvested. You can cover them up with like an old quilt. You can make a little plastic cover for your garden bed to kind of extend the season a little bit. And I do have a video on that, how to make a very simple winter cover for your garden bed. So you can go and search my channel for probably like winter cover, put that in the little search box there and it should pull up a video. It's really, really easy and that'll help extend your, your season just a little bit. Okay, um, the, here's a question about composting from Christina. How can I get my compost to break down? I turn it and add water and it just doesn't break down. Okay, Christina, um, you wanna go back and pull up my composting playlist. And there's a whole bunch of videos on that. I even have a comprehensive video on composting and it could be that you need more green or brown material. Um, so you can, you can troubleshoot, after you watch my videos, you can troubleshoot on that. And then if you still have a question, you can send me an email at Callie Kim at CallieKimGardeningHome.com and hopefully we can troubleshoot from there. But hopefully by watching those videos, it'll give you a good idea of what will help uh, your compost break down. But it does definitely need water, air, um, and then if you want it to hot compost and break down quickly, it does need to be about three feet in size. But you can, it can break down um, with a small compost pile, it'll just take you a little bit longer. So it could take you several months. So that might be part of the problem too, is maybe you're just thinking the process should be going faster, but for a cold compost pile, it's gonna take several months to break down. Okay, let's see back in the chat here. Okay, questions. Are pine cones bad for mulch? It seems like my garden isn't doing well since I put pine cones in there. I pulled them all out, but it still hasn't recovered. Um, I don't have any experience with using pine cones for mulch, so I'm not too sure. Do you mean pine needles or pine cones? So if someone else has had experience with that and could help her out, that would be great. Um, let's see here. Nisha is mentioning that your community board member reached out to me to build and run a community garden. That's wonderful, Nisha. I just designed it over the weekend and I hope it gets approved. Oh wow, that is awesome. So I, I'm so excited that you're sharing your love of growing vegetables with people in your community. That would be so rewarding. I mean, growing a garden and, and having your own vegetables is wonderful, but the rewards go far beyond that. So I'm really glad that you're sharing that, it's wonderful. Okay, Luz, and hi, Luz is a, has a daughter she's been gardening with and her daughter is commenting that she harvested okra. I am so happy about that, congratulations. And I bet you're just enjoying your vegetables and that um, I know you're growing in some of the Cali Kim Smart Pots and hopefully really, really enjoying those fresh vegetables. So I'm so proud of you and keep on gardening. You have a very special mother that loves you so much and that is so excited to garden with you and what precious memories that you're building together. So I'm so proud of you. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, here's a question from uh, Sheila. Uh, planted a few radishes over four weeks ago, but seeing more leaves than roots. Any recommendations? Okay, Sheila, yes, I do have some. That's actually something I meant to uh, mention when I talked about my little radish seedlings. Whoops, sorry about that. My little radish seedlings right here. I have lots and lots of leaves, but I also have very, very few roots. And the reason why is due to the heat. So when the temperatures are over 75, what you're gonna see with your radishes is lots of growth like this, which is perfect for salads. You can totally harvest these for salads, but you're not gonna see a lot of the roots from the radishes until the temperatures cool off. So you can see here, um, let me dig down in here. Actually, I'll just pull one out. These were planted about three weeks ago. So you're not seeing the radish roots here, you are just seeing the greens. So what you might wanna do um, is, once the weather does cool off in the 70s or the 60s or even the 50s, replant, or I'd say when it cools off into the 70s, I would replant the radishes again. And then um, you're gonna definitely see more roots developing as the weather is cool. But in hot weather, you're pretty much just gonna see the greens, which is not a bad problem because at least you have some really nice zippy salad greens to eat. So that's exactly why. Okay, let's see here what other questions we have. Hope you're enjoying growing your radish greens because they really are very tasty. Okay, um, from Pam's Pretty Plants. Hi, how are you? It's nice to have you on here today. I'm hoping to get a pile of mulch from Chip Drop before winter. Any tips for best uses and practices to compost it over winter? 
Okay, um, I actually did a chip drop a few years ago, uh, it was something like that anyway, where we got free mulch. And um, I found that I did spread it over my garden beds, but it wasn't super high quality um, wood chip mulch. So it really um, it didn't do so well, it didn't help my plants out as much. What I would really recommend is if you're gonna use wood chips, you make sure that it is like more like shredded hardwood, hardwood a high quality um, mulch without a lot of, um, I know there's some types of woods that aren't so great to to spread over your garden beds. So I would recommend maybe using the, that wood, those wood chips for your garden, uh, like your walkways and things like that. And then yes, definitely do let it break down pr pretty much just like you would any compost pile over the winter time. You could uh, mix it in with your compost or just let it break down and um, into compost over the winter by keeping it in a pile. So um, that's just what's kind of my experience with the wood chips over the garden beds. Um, some people may have a different experience with that, but that was just the experience that I had. Okay, let's see here. Any other questions? We've got a couple more minutes before I have to sign off here. Sure, you're absolutely welcome. Pam's Pretty Plants, no problem. Happy to help here. And let's see here. Michelle, hi Kim, your channel is inspirational. Thank you so much, Michelle. I appreciate you watching and I'm really, really glad that it's helpful to you in growing your own veggies. Okay, Sheila, okay, I answered that question already. Let's see here. Coffee grounds are great to add to the compost pile, Debbie. That's a great suggestion. Um, when I really wanna get my compost heated up, I will head over to Starbucks or sometimes your local coffee shops will save their coffee grounds and you can add that to your compost pile and it is very, very helpful to your compost. Okay, oh, here's a great question from Stephen about planting garlic. Okay, definitely, should I be planting garlic now? I'm dealing with frost soon and I have a winter. <laughs> That's great. Um, yes, if you are having uh, frost coming up here in the next month or so, now is a great time to plant garlic. Um, it's a good idea to plant it like two to four weeks before your frost date. So you can grab those garlic bulbs. I've tried organic bulbs from the grocery store. They work okay. Or you can actually get the garlic bulbs like from Baker Creek or another seed company and get those planted. And then you'll have some beautiful garlic in the early summer. So yeah, definitely get that garlic planted. Okay, guys, I'm going to have to sign off for today. Actually, I have to go pick up Drew from school now. Um, he gets out early this year, so he's a senior. And believe it or not, he gets out at lunchtime. Lucky him. He's already taken all of his tough classes. And he has a super easy year. He has his driver's license, and we're working on getting him a car. He's been saving his money, so he's really excited about that. So, um, again, sorry for all the difficulties today. I hope you guys all are enjoying your cool weather gardening. Grab those fall weather, um, the fall garden seed collection, or the late summer, or the lettuce collection are good ones to start with now over on my website and hopefully we'll get this live stream issue fixed by next week so thanks for your patience all right guys we will see you on the next video which hopefully will be later in the week all right bye-bye